Hi, can anybody hear me? Mic check. Yes. 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 Okay, great. Um, Mahesh, can you hear me? Mahesh said earlier he was having trouble joining or it was slow. Meet Echo was slow. Um, I'll just wait one more second for him to join. Otherwise, I'll kick it off. Okay, I, I don't think Mahesh is going to be able to, uh, or he's not able to connect us yet, so I'll kick it off. Uh, welcome to the uh, NetConf Working Group Virtual Interim, the first of uh, this year, 2024. Um, let me see. There we go. Uh, this is the note well, as everyone knows. This is a, a, an official ITF meeting. And anything you say here is considered to be a contribution to the IETF. Um, presumably, everyone has seen this before, but uh, in case you haven't, there are links on this slide, and um, this slide is linked in the agenda page, so you can uh, read about it there. Uh, we do have a code of conduct. Uh, the IETF relies on the cooperation between participants of diverse background. It strives for mutual respect, dignity for all, and common sense decency. The chairs will intervene if necessary to enforce these guidelines. Um, we are, of course, using Meet Echo. If you're hearing my voice now, you're already, you know, connected. Uh, there's also a Zulip channel that, uh, if you want, if you only can need or want to use the um, text, you can connect to that. There's also a chat window inside Meet Echo that's used. Uh, we have two hours for this slot, although it's not necessary to use the whole time. Um, we do use the queue function in Meet Echo, so if you wish to say something, please raise your hand, and um, and then you know the chairs or the uh, discussion leader will ask you know call on you to to uh, unmute your mic when you're at the top of the queue. And when uh, you're done speaking, please remove yourself from the queue. Actually, we had a net mod meeting two days ago, and that was uh, a, a, an issue, a recurring issue. Many people forgot to remove themselves from the queue, and it became kind of confusing. Uh, well, there is, we are taking notes uh, in on the page. There's a, a link to, to the notes. Um, please contribute to the minute-taking process, if you can. And let's see. Ah, the agenda for this presentation is, uh, sorry, for this virtual interim is uh, the continuing discussion about NetConf Next and RESTConf Next. Per will be our discussion leader. And this is my last slide. So I will um, start to share per slide. And per, I will pass you control. So, uh, oh, actually, yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is uh, the discussion about uh, kicking off the work for uh, NetConf Next and RESTConf Next. And uh, uh, I thought we could discuss uh, these things. Uh, first, discuss the status of wh uh, where we are now, the category categories of work that we have uh, identified so far, uh, uh, design teams, uh, mailing list for these design teams, uh, uh, volunteers, uh, ask for uh, uh, volunteers, and how the effort going forward should look. 
Uh, yeah, let's continue. So the status now is I checked yesterday, and uh, the issues on GitHub now are 31 open issues for NetConf next and 13 issues for RESTConf next. Some of the NetConf ones are probably things that could be uh, closed because they're ongoing work, but that is sort of the status uh, currently. Uh, there are some backwards compatible extensions ongoing in the drafts. For instance, the transaction ID, list pagination, trace context, uh, uh, view, yank, push, all those slightly tangential maybe drafts. Um, and then looking at yang next, there are uh, 101 open issues on the GitHub tracker. And as uh, some of you uh, may know, we had an interim in December, finishing off the uh, uh, last year. And we, uh, back then, we basically just started going through categorizing the work uh, on the uh, issue trackers and discussed a bit on how the effort should look going forward. No conclusions uh, on that meeting, though. But the categories of categories of work that have been ident identified or classified are one backwards compatible extensions where we don't need a protocol upgrade, and there are uh, already ongoing efforts for this. Uh, the second one is a minor protocol upgrade where that could or m might or might not be backwards compatible. For instance, in this case, it would be netconf 1.2 uh, and or restconf 1.1. Um, and then we have the third category of a major protocol upgrade, uh, 2.0 version, uh, that most probably uh, will be non-backwards compatible and might also or probably will require Yang next. Uh, yes, Kent in the queue. Yes, hi. Um... As a contributor, you have RESTConf 1.1, and um, this is interesting because version 1 of RESTConf is just 1. It's not 1.0. So I would we call it 1.1 or? No, it's it, a, it, no, sorry, it's an error in my, it, it, it should probably be RESTConf 2. Thanks. Yeah, OK, but maybe. I mean, I'm not opposed entirely to 1.1. It's, I mean, it's just the precedent of the first version. Um, mm. The first draft doesn't say, in fact, it will actually say it explicitly says <laughs> that it's up to any future draft to pick uh, its numbering scheme, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we made, that's interesting. I just wanted to. I actually looked at the capabilities in the in RFC 8040, the rest of the RFC, and the capabilities are numbered 1.0. So the rest conf capabilities are not are versioned 1.0. Okay. Okay, great. So there's a little bit of presence. So that sounds good. Uh, right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, Shifan. Yeah. Uh, hi. C can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So in the, the, the third bullet point, you mentioned that there are some major protocol upgrade which might require the young next. Right. So it's does that mean that we probably need some there we have some issues in NetConf uh next that would be dependent on a new version of Young, is my understanding right? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh Kent. Well yeah, and just to add to that, uh when Yang Next happens, it would necessitate additional changes to NetConf and RESTConf in order to support it as well. So there may be in the um, NetConf Next and RESTConf Next issue trackers some issues that are not backwards compatible and hence requiring a major protocol upgrade. There would also be a major protocol upgrade necessary to support just Yang Next additions. OK. Uh, Xinwu. Chen, we can't hear you. Do you have your microphone on? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
I, I just feel confused, you know, for NetCon for next still depend on Young next, I think, uh, you know, should recover from any version of Young, right, or not? I'm sorry, Chen, can you repeat that? I, I didn't quite understand what you were saying. Yeah, so for third category, you know, major protocol uh, uh, upgrade, you you know, mentioning you know, require young next. That means you know, major protocol upgrade. You know, may depend on the young next. But uh, you know, based on early discussion in the mailing list, I, uh, my feeling is you know, really you know, for uh, net conf next uh, or protocol upgrade should you know decouple any version of young model language, right? I'm sorry, can I um, reply to Chen? Uh, sure. Uh, yes, okay, I, th I think, okay, so the category, this slide, maybe the second bullet point under th section three isn't um, quite on uh, accurate because I think what it's trying to say, this this third bullet point is that there are issues in the NetConfNex and RestConfNex trackers that if, you know, they're not backwards compatible if we were to do them. Um, those issues, uh, whether or not they depend on Yanex, is it's un, it's they may not necessarily depend on Yanex, but um, some of them may and some of them may not. Does that help, Shin? Yeah, um, that that yeah that thanks for clarification. Yeah. yeah. So so I can uh, clarify uh, further that. These three categories, each ticket in the GitHub tracker would fall into one of these buckets, one, two, or three. Uh, and it, as Ken said, it might not require Yang Next as it, as it stands, but uh, could probably or be intertwined with the Yang Next uh, work. But so it, there are tickets today that are possible to work on as backward compatible extensions. There are tickets today that could work in a minor protocol upgrade. And there are tickets today that would be non-backwards compatible and or require Yang next. Uh, let's continue. Yeah, so so to to work with this, we uh, the chairs have created uh, design teams, two design teams, one NetConf Next DT and one RestConf Next design team. And the idea is that they should work on all three categories within their respective protocol uh, in order to not have uh, six design teams, then one on, on minor protocol upgrade and one on the, the bigger uh, protocol overhaul. Uh, so so all, all work uh, encompassing these three categories of different compatibility would go into each design team here. There would also, ideally as well, probably be overlap between people in, in the design teams. Uh, there are mailing lists. Yes, Shin? You are muted. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah. Can you go back to previous page? Absolutely. Yeah, so in in the uh, GitHub issue track issue tracker, you have a thirty one issue. So I'm wondering, you know, uh, you 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 list uh, you there's a uh, thirteen issue ticket uh, specific to the rest comp, right? Or this thirteen issue ticket? Can you hear me? Yeah, Jim, um, your connection was a little bit shaky. Uh, could you maybe repeat what you said? Yeah, uh, you know, for these, uh, you know, in the design team, you, you know, you may break it down into NetConf for next design team and RestConf net next design team. Uh, I, I found, you know, in uh, issue tracker, you know, in the GitHub, you know, you list the 31 issue and uh, 
uh, there's a certain issue, you know, specific to the RESCON, but I, uh, I, I think maybe this certain issue, you know, uh, apply both for NetConf and also RESCON, right? Is any issue only apply to the RESCONF? Yes, some are only per protocol, but some also overlap. Kent? Yeah, no, I was just going to agree with you. Um, oh. Yes, there are, there are some overlap. Ideally, the ones that apply to both, uh, there's actually a second ticket. I mean, the ticket appears in both issue trackers. Um, but you're right, as there's probably some issues that aren't, that do apply to both, though there isn't a ticket in both. Okay. I tr I tried writing tickets for on on both protocols if I identified something that was applicable for both protocols. So they are tracked in both. But it, it's it's a, a lot of overlap, but not only overlap. You can see. So continuing to mailing list. This, these are the mailing list for uh, uh, the design teams. Uh, please sign up. If you're interested in the work, um, you can find the, these slides later on um, Data Tracker. Uh, and I don't know if a mail has uh, uh, dropped down in the on the NetConf list. Otherwise, we could send one out for easy access. Chin. Yeah, per actually, you know, we already have, you know, GitHub issue tracker, you know, we can make comments, you know, resolve the issue, you know, take an open source approach, you know. Now you uh, think uh, we should set up, you know, two different um, managers. So uh, how, so when, when, when we use, you know, GitHub issue tracker, when we will use the yeah, yeah, yeah. managers? So, yes. So open source is bigger than just GitHub. And uh, the work I've done is uh, sometimes on mailing lists and sometimes on issue trackers and sometimes on both. I think uh, you're correct, though, that uh, uh, a lot of people like to work on the, uh, like to work on the tracker. Uh, and that's fine. But if we, for instance, if the design team would like to uh, coordinate uh, slides and, or presentations or something for an IETF meeting, that would probably fit better on the mailing list, for instance, um, and not being discussed on the tracker. Uh, but we can, well, I have a slide where we can discuss how. how yeah, my, my suggestion. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my, my you know, su suggestion maybe we can cross post, you know, for some of issue tracker discussion, open issue, this can be, you know, reflected, you know, on the mailing list. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kent? Uh, just I'm trying to understand when Chen says on the mailing list, he means on the NetConf mailing list as opposed to one of these specific DT lists? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, DT mailing list. I just uh, feel a little bit confused because we have mailing lists that we can leverage it. So which one we should? you know, focus on? Uh, well, as a uh, budding member of these design teams, uh, I would think that it would be up to the design teams to decide, you know, uh, which approach or what makes the most sense for them. Um, but uh, I would, you know, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think both have their strengths and weaknesses, right? And, and uh, you know, when it comes to putting out a message or, or a thought, um, I guess if it can be categorized to a specific issue, then perhaps the tracker is the best way to do it. So it can be captured and tracked um, there because it's specific to that issue. But if it's not specific to an issue, then the mailing list might be the preferred approach. Um, and also, as Per mentioned, there's plenty of messages that are maybe logistical in nature and, you know, that aren't tied to any specific issue that could be discussed in the mailing list. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, yeah, just to add to that a little bit more, um, these mailing lists, the intention of them is somewhat modeled after the versioning design team and NetMod working group, for those who have familiarity with that. Um, so it's just a place for the design team members to be able to, um, you know, discuss without necessarily having everything broadcasted on the, the public. Um, well, these are public lists also, but on the on the primary NetConf mailing list. Chin? Yeah, uh, that's good uh, example. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, carrying on. Uh, this is the slide where uh, I and the chairs, I guess, ask for volunteers to uh, get involved in the work to facilitate uh, meetings, to be editors for drafts, to be authors, co-authors, and contributors to uh, drafts. Uh, th this is uh, what I see as being needed. For instance, facilitating recurring meetings and then taking ownership of document progress and then also contributing um, to the to the work. Mahesh? Yeah, I was going to add to that. Uh, sorry, first of all, for being a little late joining the meeting is um, that if there's interest in one particular issue on of all the issues on that tracker that you could choose to pick up that and contribute with that particular issue also you don't have to be responsible for everything or every issue on the tracker so you could choose to focus only on one or a couple of issues that you are interested in and contribute that thank you very good point kent Right, a uh, very good point. Uh, something that I was thinking about as well. The, obviously, the ITF is a volunteer organization, and it's up to individuals to decide what they wish to volunteer on. Um, some issue. I mean, th this is not top down, right? It's not at this point of the stage. It's up to the design team to decide. Well, ultimately, to produce a a draft, right, an ID, and that hopefully the working group or they'll you know bring to the working group for adoption. Um, but what that draft contains is completely up to the design team. It's, it's not being, um, pushed or, you know, there's no top down, you know, function. It, we have an issue tracker that was put up for the purpose of sort of collecting information, but it's not stating that any one thing has to be done. There's no prioritization, uh, uh you know, one ticket over another. Um, in my view, it's purely up to the volunteers. You know of the design team what if, if someone has a pet you know issue like it's their favorite thing is it's important to them uh they can pick up the pen for that issue and try to bring you know forward the update necessary to make that issue come to life um when the design team feels that they've completed as much as they want to complete then they can bring it to the working group for adoption and the working group of course could then at that point you know then you, there might be some statements. Well, you know, we missed out some important things. And even though the design team members didn't think it was important, the working group thinks it's important. And therefore, um, it winds up some work, some additional effort or items need to be picked up uh, in order for the last call to occur. But that's how I view it as well, uh, sort of following up with what Mahesh said. Yeah, very, very good points as well. Thank you. Uh, Mahesh? Yeah, I was going to second. Uh, well, uh, Ken's thought also on the uh, what the ultimate uh, result of all this work is going to be. Um, it's ultimately going to be whatever is contributed towards that uh, um, RFC or a biz document. Um, and in a way, the uh, if something is of priority, I think the work group has to decide who's going to work on it if that's an essential piece of the work. But what goes into the document ultimately is going to be the contrib individual contributions that are going to be made to the document. Yes. 
Thank you. So this is basically the discussion we have had on how to uh, how people want to organize their work. Uh, these these are the things that uh, I can see that uh, the design team can do, and also of course then working on the mailing list uh, and the issue tracker, which is not listed here, um, and have a recurrent design team meetings as the uh, Yang versioning design team has, even having interims like the ones we have now and before Christmas. Um, uh, yeah. Kent. Uh, OK, the recurring design team meetings. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of uh, having um, interactive conversations, but I'm cognizant of the fact that we have participants from time zones that are easily 12 hours apart. And I, I, I don't know about the versioning effort, if that's the true there as well. Um, and per, I think you are, so maybe you can answer me. But um, oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, uh, currently it's uh, mostly in the North and South American time zones and the European African time zones. Okay, yeah, that, I kind of suspected that it was uh, more reasonable. So anyway, uh, a recurring meeting, um, and I just thinking about the versioning design team in NetMod, I think they meet weekly. Um, a weekly call that, at, you know, you know, it, there's going to be bookends, right? I mean, some people might be in uh, uh, West Coast of America or in China. Those are 12 hours apart, um, depending on daylight savings. And if it's weekly, that could become um, difficult. So I don't know. I'm, 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 I mean, I, I guess this is a conversation for the design team to uh, pick up. But I'm just thinking that. I mean, it's, it's a special thing. Uh, like this virtual interim is a special thing, and and you know participants are making a special effort to either wake up early or stay up late in order to uh, participate in this very special and not very often meeting. But when it comes to a recurring meeting that's happening very often, that might be a difficult to do. So anyway, I just think that more thought needs to be put around, and maybe it depends on who all uh, joins the design team. Right, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, or or uh, or, per, you know, potentially seeing a problem that that won't manifest. But um, I'm anyway. That's why I raised my hand. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, I can uh, just uh, answer shortly that uh, I very much uh, feel your sentiment as well, and uh, think that one should be careful uh, just scheduling meetings. Um, as well, uh, and um, I, I just wanted to present what is what is possible, uh, not what, how how the work should be done. That is up to the participants, in my in my view. But these these are some of the things that one could do, and that has been ongoing in the IETF that I've seen. Uh, thank you, uh, Shin. Yeah, I, I think, you know, probably and can, you know, speak my words, actually, I, uh, you know, worry about the, you know, time commi commitment and also, you know, how frequently we, you know, uh, we, we schedule this kind of meeting weekly or bi-weekly. And if we contribute all these design team worker, and also you need to consider, you know, uh, you know, time zone uh, for China, you, mm -hmm. I think, you know, for Version and design team uh, meeting actually usually yes. Uh, or sorry, did you uh, uh, finish with a question? I think we lost him. I, Jen, I think you need to turn off your microphone if you're done uh, standing at the mic. I think you're uh, next in queue, Mahesh. Yeah, what I was going to say is that I I think um, a doodle poll in asking the question of how often they want to meet or when they want to meet would be one way to try to resolve 
the timing issue and the commitment issue also for that particular design team and as I think it was Kent who said that really all, it's the members of the design team that can decide what works best for that particular team. So there is exactly uh, the, the point again, the members of the design team. So uh, we need to identify the members of the design team. That seems to be the next, uh, I won't call it a blocker, but we, it, it, it's the thing that is a predicating our, the ability to pick a time if there were going to be times uh, for a recurring meeting or, or even if it was just a kickoff. I mean, I definitely am a fan of a design team kickoff meeting. Um, and for that, you know, it, I, I would consider that to be a special, you know, case type situation and, you know, uh, not quite the recurring meeting just yet, but a kickoff meeting. Um, but from there, it can be decided as to what the cadence is going forward. Thank you. So uh, those were my, my slides and we have already started the discussion around, uh, uh, around the questions that I've had as well. Uh, how big uh, the, the things I've been thinking about are how big uh, effort it is, how big effort people can invest, uh, how big effort for me personally that I can invest and so on. Um, so uh, I, I don't know process wise how, how to proceed from here uh, though. I have I have uh, started this uh, work in the IETF meeting, the last IETF meeting, 118, and then uh, led the discussions for these two interims. Uh, I volunteer to to lead this effort, uh, and I would very much welcome more work, leading, coordinating, uh, participating, and contributing on large and small things. So uh, I don't know if it's interesting to do a poll here or, or a hum or how you do this virtual <laughs> in this virtual interims uh, to see how what the interest is, uh, Mesh. Yeah, uh, I first of all want, wanted to thank you for uh, volunteering to step up and lead the last two meetings. Uh, and clearly, going forward, I think uh, you also indicated that. Uh, you, know, you would be at least interested in leading the effort on one of the design teams. Um, so we have two design teams. We um, so we need, of course, volunteers for each of one of them. Uh, but also the fact that uh, um, in in terms of effort, it's not just going to be per leading both the design teams. So we need. Uh, to also look for someone to lead the effort on the other design team or the two design teams. Something I think that the chairs can choose to pick up uh, once we have somebody who's willing to volunteer. So are we, so the question to ask is, are we asking for volunteers at this point uh, as far as team leads are concerned? In, in my opinion, I think that might be the next uh, way because then we could start in some sense the work and have someone interested and invested in ensuring it progresses. Kent? Yeah, um, I don't know. I have a few different thoughts. Uh, first is, well, also I want to thank you per for uh, volunteering to uh, initially take on that role. Um, and, uh, but, but, you know, I, I noticed the participants of this virtual interim are, uh, not as many as I had hoped. Um, so I think, you know, actually, I mean, to pick a lead now may not be entirely making sense. Uh, perhaps it does, perhaps it doesn't, I don't know. Uh, but then I wonder, well, what, do, what is the role of the lead <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, and also, then I think about well, what is what is how would the the members um, uh, interoperate or in, interact? And uh, I guess kind of going back to Jen's earlier comment about oh, should we use the issue tracker? Or should we use 
the mailing list. Um, well, I mean, I guess it's not exactly to that comment, but but related uh, the use of GitHub in general, and in particular, the notion of like the main or master branch and uh, pull requests and uh, that. Um, I mean, being a geographically distributed asynchronous effort, uh, it I mean, we might it might make sense to leverage uh, GitHub workflows in that regard. Um, I, I would imagine step one would be to initialize the, um, well, okay, hold on. We, we have the uh, GitHub um, repos for NetConf Next and, and uh, ResConf Next, but, but I don't think those repos should be used for the drafts. So if we want to create a, an 80-40 biz, or um, a 6142 biz, then we should probably create separate GitHub repos for those um, documents and initialize those documents with the existing versions of uh, the documents, uh, the, you know, the XML, you know, to check it in. And then, uh, so that'd be how, that'd be the initialization of the main branch and then from that point forward, I guess it'd be some notion of like pull requests. Um, I don't know if it's quite the same thing as you know facilitators. That are like where your your question is who who would be uh, willing to step up to be the facilitator, but but it kind of comes I, if we do this approach, then it's more um, you know who is willing to contribute pull requests, um, and then who would review the pull requests and. You know, ultimately merge the pull request. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just throwing it out there. It might make sense to use GitHub workflows for this effort. Yeah, I, th I think it, just to uh, quickly respond, I think it makes very much sense uh, to do that, and then people can on, on isolated issues that are for uh, uh, document additions or modifications. Uh, Chin. You were muted. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I missed the, you know, uh, the previous interim meeting to discuss the uh, Young Next. You know, probably you already have Young Next design team. You may call for volunteer. Now, you know, in this interim meeting, you you propose to set up or, you know, uh, you know, NetCon for next uh, design team, ResCon uh, next uh, design team. So I, I'm just, uh, you know, thinking, uh, what uh, what will be the goal for this uh, design team? Uh, you know, as uh, you know, Ken mentioned, we produce uh, uh, NetCon for piece or uh, ResCon piece, or we, uh, you know, uh, we focus on, you know, to resolve all the open issue. Uh, we, uh, you know, fire the, in the GitHub issue trackers. Uh, so, what what will be the uh, you know uh, you know deliverable or, or uh, the goal for this design team? I understand the the goal for the design teams is to produce documents to be adopted in the working group and then later be uh, standards right? to produce drafts that can be adopted by the working group and then become RFCs and that can be small issues. And it really depends on what the members of the design teams want to work on. Yeah, I just feel you know we if we you know focus on you know produce a net account piece or rest account piece, maybe this uh, kind of you know uh, you know no hang, hanging uh, fruits we we can you know target to. But if we resolve all the open issue, especially for you know young next, you have one hundred. Issue you need to resolve is this maybe a long term project, so it may take a long time. Yes, indeed, and that is uh, uh, the connecting back to the Yang versioning design team. It has been an effort for I five or six years, I think, and it's not all all members are not the same as with the inception of the design team so at the start and what i think at least from what i've seen they're a bit different 
uh, participants over the years. Uh, and the long, the the bigger the overhaul for the protocols that is uh, being worked on, the probably the longer the work effort will be. But it's totally doable to pick up a small issue and do an isolated draft to solve that issue, uh, and then uh, sort of leave the effort. I think so. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's again, it's really up to the design team, the members of the design teams to decide on how and what they want to work on. Uh, Kent. Uh, yes, a few comments here. Uh, first is the charter for the design teams. Uh, if you look at the text of the um, charter, I think it states that the design teams would uh, initially focus on like backwards compatible approaches and then non-backwards compatible approaches ideally coinciding with uh, the publication of a Yang Next document or, or 7950biz from the NetMod working group. Um, the uh, Chin made a comment about the tickets that are currently in the Yang, sorry, the NetConf Next and RestConf Next trackers. And actually, I don't think, you know, what we per had these three groupings um, um, updates that are not necessarily requiring protocol updates. I mean, they could they could be an RFC that simply updates RESTConf or or you know extends RESTConf in a, but it doesn't require a new version of Res, uh, RESTConf. Not it doesn't require a 1.1 of or a 1.2 of NetConf, for instance. It, it's just an update to NetConf that works with 1.1 as well. Um, so that's the first category. So, and in that case, we wouldn't even need a 6241biz uh, GitHub repo. We'd have a different repo for that particular update to NetConf um, 1.2, sorry, 1.1. Uh, Too many numbers <laughs> to keep track of. <laughs> um, uh, OK, so that's the first thought. Uh, second thought is I wanted to mention it. Uh, the, with regards to Yang Next, uh, there, uh, Chen, there has not been any announcement made. Uh, there is not yet a design team uh, in NetMod to uh, work on it. But it is something that uh, I am, uh, both as chair and a contributor of uh, NetMod, uh, interested in kicking off in the, hopefully, the near future. It will be a long-term project. I, I cannot imagine Yang Next completing, um, you know, it, it, it's at least three years. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, scare anybody away, but it, 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 there's a lot of work. Uh, if you look at those issues that are in the Yang Next issue tracker, it's, it will take quite a long time to, um, but we got to get started is the main thing. So um, I wouldn't expect the Yang Next effort to produce a document uh, for, for a few years. Mahesh, you're in the queue. Yeah, I wanted to pick up on that example that Ken started off with. Is, uh, not all um, items on that tracker list and necessitate uh, a, a part of NetConf Next or RESCOMP Next. And I, one particular example that I can think of was is, it's actually an old and expired draft um, the binary format. Um, there was it was presented in the NetConf working group, but at that point it was uh, not much, it didn't get in Ghana too much interest. But Andy, for example, recently reached out um, and said he would be interested in restarting that work. And so that would be, a, a, that's a perfect example of something that um, doesn't need the next version of NetConf or RESConf next uh, to be able to support um, existing protocol. And so that could, out of that uh, list, could result in a separate GitHub repository being created uh, for work just on that item. And it doesn't need to be tracked anymore as part of RESCON next or NetConf next. So I wanted to put that out as an example of how things could proceed um, 
So where there are no dependencies, that work can become an independent stream of work that uh, is done, whether it's part of the NetConf uh, next design team or not, even that decision can be made if somebody wants to go off and do the work by themselves and come back to the working group when they have a draft that is ready to be discussed. So I just want to put that out as an example. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, so my my when I said that we look for volunteers, I I wasn't really I, meaning that we ask for volunteers only in this meeting, but to raise, like, to to volunteer to to um, raise your hand and say that I could do this, and then we could do the same on the mailing list and and gather these uh, interested people in the. Ideally, I guess it would happen maybe on the design team mailing lists also. Kent? Uh, yes, I volunteer to participate in this effort, both NetConf Next and RESTConf Next. Thank you. Jean? You're muted. Yeah, uh, I also volunteer for NetConf Next, uh, RESCOM Next uh, design team. And uh, so I, I just want to confirm, you know, so for this design team work, most, most of focus on, you know, uh, you know, to produce uh, like a NetConf piece or RESCOM piece uh, instead of, you know, for, you know, minor product, protocol extension, they should be done in the, you know, existing working room like NetConf, right? I reply to that? Yeah, th yes, please. I think you have, have, have very good uh, conclusions. Thank you, Kent. Please reply. Uh, yeah, OK, sorry for skipping, uh, jumping to the head of the line. But uh, yeah, I was thinking about that also, Jen. And you know, what is the true purpose of these design teams? And if you look to the charter, it says, uh, like the actual text says, to produce uh, you know, 60 uh, to 41 or 6142 biz and, and 8040 biz, um, that's what the text says. Um, it doesn't say anything about other documents. So I would imagine it comes, it, it means that this design team is to focus on those um, biz documents uh, of the protocol document, of the main protocol RFCs. Um, per correctly ident or stated that there are these three categories and the first category doesn't really require uh, even a minor update to the protocol. Um, but for those issues, they don't have to be picked up by the design team. Um, if no one wants to pick it up, then, well, first off, again, it's a volunteer effort. <laughs> Whoever wants to pick some things up, that you know, they can pick it up. Um, and uh, But they don't have to be picked up, is my main point. Ram Kumar, you're in the queue. Hi. Um, as others have said, I would also like to volunteer for the design team. Uh, but as uh, others have already said as well, it's not clear what exactly their scope of work is or will be. Um, so I guess uh, I will just go through the open issues and pick something that I'm interested in and start with that, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good way forward. Uh, and join the mailing list uh, if you want to be involved. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Shifang? Yeah, uh, I just want to mention that I'm also willing to contribute to both work. And I don't think, I don't like the idea that, I don't think we should uh, wait for the Young Next to publish the NetConf piece and RESTConf piece work. I think that would delay, that would be delayed. So maybe uh, focus on the issues that 
uh, would not require a young X work first. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mahesh. Thank you. Yes, I was going to actually respond both to Shifang's question as well as Ram's. Um, so I'll start with uh, Shifang. As far as um, waiting for Yang next, I think uh, um, there is some dependency in some cases uh, on Yang next, and that work, of course, even if it gets started, will probably get stalled. I'm waiting for Yang next work to um, at least start. Uh, but I think as the chairs have also discussed, there's nothing to stop the uh, beginning of the work. So certainly work within NetComp next and Descom next can get started without waiting for Yang next to start. But uh, to conclude, there would I would imagine that there would be some dependency on Yang next. Um, so that might. Uh, stall or at least temporarily stop the work till the uh, next picks up. But as uh, Kent has already indicated, I think there is interest in the NetMod working group to get Yang next started also. Um, so that's my opinion and I'm sure Kent will add uh, anything from his side. To Ram's thing about, uh, you know, uh, what to work on, certainly one way to look at it is I think mostly as uh, this is a volunteer organization, you will do what is of interest to you. So if there's a particular issue that you feel strongly about, um, there's nothing to say you can't pick up that work and, and start suggesting changes um, and without necessarily deciding which document or which um, design team it has to be focused on. Um, I think it can be posted to both if need be, uh, if you have uh, ways to move forward on a particular issue. So those are some of my thoughts. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so, um, uh, Mahesh, go ahead. Oh, uh, one other thing that I forgot. I don't know if everyone who's in the meeting right now is also on the mailing list. Maybe I can look for the link and post it in the chat window if people haven't joined the mailing list. Um, the second part of it was, I think, um, we um, going back to the NetCon mailing list to ask for volunteers, NNR, I guess, uh, the 119 meeting. Uh, Kent and Per, did you have any thoughts on what you might want to achieve um, in 119, if anything? I have not uh, thought about uh, that far in the future. Okay. Um, me neither. I, uh, sorry, <laughs> I haven't thought that far in the future. Uh, if, if if anything, we'll just um, we could provide a status update. But design teams, hopefully, there'd be a kickoff meeting of some sort before then, at least. And so, uh, it could be stated that design team met. There was a kickoff meeting. Whatever the outcome of that meeting was, could be um, shared with the working group as a whole. Uh, you know, one thing to note is Jason Stern, as the versioning design team uh, leader of sort, uh, he puts to the mod mailing list emails following up every design team meeting uh, that captures the results of that meeting. So I guess maybe the same is done here, in which case also reporting uh, essentially the same results to the working group at 119 would be redundant, but nonetheless, it could be done for, uh, because it's a, a broader audience perhaps than, or a different audience than those that are signed up to the NetConf mailing list. Right, okay. Yeah, 
good points. I, I have a question I thought about uh, if the BIS documents should also include ex uh, protocol extensions as a part of the protocol. So things that today are extensions to say RESTConf and NetConf, if in uh, BIS documents, they should be included in those documents. Kent. Yeah, uh, I, I wanted to raise this as well. I, I, um, exactly. There, and, and the same would be true with Yang. There's there's a lot of, uh, or Yang next, uh, but there's a lot of things that have been tacked on over time. And But now if we're creating an actual version, uh, minor version update to the protocol, we could roll them in into that version. Uh, one example, uh, perhaps prematurely, <laughs> but oh no, actually with the timing of things, but a list pagination effort, right? So uh, right now the, there's the list pagination netconf and list pagination restconf documents, which are updating the one dot, uh, well, sorry, the uh, netconf and restconf protocols. But if we were to do minor updates to them, we could actually roll those list that list pagination effort and make it part of the base protocol. Uh, it makes sense to me. I think it's always a good idea to um, simplify, to consolidate over time. Yeah. I think we're aligned. Good points. Uh, I don't have uh, uh, much else to uh, discuss myself. I'm happy to continue the discussion uh, either on this interim uh, or the duration of the meeting. Uh, otherwise, um, I think we can take it to the design team and the NetConf mailing lists, maybe. Kent? Right. Okay. So um, I agree. I think we're near the end of this interim, the virtual interim. But as a follow up step, uh, we probably should send an email to the NetConf mailing list, um, you know, providing, uh, you know, we met, we, um, you know, uh, we, you know, we, we, there, there's the creation of the two design uh, team mailing list. Uh, there's a desire to, um, have people sign up to those mailing lists and let's say two weeks from now a doodle poll will be sent to those mailing lists to solicit times for when a kickoff meeting could occur for those design teams um something like that so you know i'm just trying to figure out what's the next step and so ultimately i think we want to have a kickoff meeting for each of those design teams Uh, uh, very good path forward, I think. I'm I'm also uh, uh, sensitive to the fact that uh, everyone that might want to be on this call can't be on this call at this time. Uh, so it would be uh, it would be good to have a, like a broad pool of people to gather from to also. Uh, do it on uh, ask on the mailing list of course that is also as i have understood it, where the actual work is being done in the ITF. Kent. one more thing we could do um as a prelude to that um it, it is i mean uh, we can go ahead and create the the 6241 and 8040 biz repos in github and perhaps even initialize them with the XML from the base protocol documents. And, uh, you know, it, it's a minor thing, but it has the optics of it are, are kind of powerful, right? It, it shows that, like, these documents are on the table, the operating table. <laughs> and uh, so we, that's something we could do also, or I could do um, as chair to kick off that effort, help kick off the effort. Yes, very good. Okay, Mahesh, you're in queue. Yeah, uh, I like that idea, Kent, and I think it, uh, you know it's uh, I think our effort to show that the effort has been kicked off, and and uh, 
gives people at least an option to um, start looking at what's in the document also today and what possibly they could uh, or text they could be adding and do it in the form of pull requests uh, so that they can uh, send it out for review on on the mailing list either the design team mailing list or even the netcom mailing list if need be if they want other people to um, review the changes thank you Kent? Yeah, so um, what do you think is the sequence of things? Do you, should we send out the email first, like perhaps even today or tomorrow, uh, and then create those repos, or wait until those repos get created and then send the email? Um, I, if I, might, I, yeah. uh, I think uh, that sequence can, of first sending out the mail informing that we had the interim and um, what we discussed on that interim, followed by saying that, yeah, uh, we will create these two repos for uh, the two biz documents would be one. Uh, it sounds natural to me, but I'm open to other suggestions also. Kent? Yeah, I, th that's uh, fine. I, and I, I know there'd be a delay if, if we wanted to create the repos first. You know, honestly, today's a very busy day for me, and I probably wouldn't get to it until the weekend uh, or early next week. Um, so we may not want to wait that long. But uh, there's just one minor thing, uh, the sequence of those mails. The first mail we're sending, the one we're talking about, would go to the NetConf mailing list. So it's a very broad uh, distribution. Um, and if the repos aren't created yet, then of course it can't have hyperlinks to the repos because they're not created yet. Um, but if we uh, if we create the repos after, then presumably the announcement of those repos being created would go to the the DT specific mailing list, and hence the netconf the broad netconf mailing list would miss that. Um, so I'm just thinking from an optics perspective. Uh, uh, maybe okay. How about this? A, a, a compromise. Uh, very quickly, I can just create the repos and not initialize them, um, and so we have we can the URL will exist and we can point to it. Um, I, I suggest uh, I suggest uh, the following that we send out a mail uh, summarizing today. I can do that. I have some notes uh, on the side here. I haven't uh, used HedgeDoc for note taking uh, during this meeting, but I have some notes. I will publish them on HedgeDoc as well, and then we create the repos. And then we send another mail also to the netconf list. So two chances of gathering interest uh, once yep. now, saying that we will do this. And then now we have done it. You can join now or, or, or the other now. OK, sounds good. Uh, but uh, Chen's in the queue, so maybe he has yep. an, a thought as well. Yes, Shin. Yeah. Uh, just uh, one more question, you know, for these two design team ministers, everybody can, you know, get access to it, uh, open to the public. Uh, so if, uh, um, so everybody who subscribe to these uh, ministers will become the uh, design team member or not? Kent. Uh, just responding to Chen. Um, well, I mean, it, it ultimately comes down to who has the energy to volunteer their time. And absolutely, it's open to the public. The, the mailing lists are open to the public. They're not private. Um, anyone can join. They could be lurkers and really not contributing at all. Um, they may never join. They may not join the kickoff uh, meeting. They may not uh, ever contribute a line of text to the effort. But they're just lurking. So I mean, I wouldn't. Okay, if you, uh, I think that there needs to be. Uh, okay, uh, the prize here is the list of authors, right? Uh, who is listed as authors on the IDs? And I'm somewhat of a stickler for. You actually have to be contributing text. 
<laughs> I mean, if you don't get to be an author just because you showed up and you know, um, you know, raised your hand once, that doesn't count. You you actually have to be a, a contributor of text. So, um, and I think that that sort of you know self selects, uh, you know, who is you know, and then who is in the design team. Uh, I mean, maybe that's an artificial um, construct, like the term design team. It really it's authors, right? So. Um, but yeah, it ultimately comes down to those who are contributing text. Yeah, that's that's a fair. Yeah, thanks for clarification. Marsh. Yeah, I was going to bring in another aspect uh, that uh, I think GitHub supports, and I think we might want to exercise in this case is uh, there are of course different level of privileges within GitHub. So, for example, and I'm not saying that that has to be the Way to do it, that the design team lead would be have admin access, and they would delegate uh, whatever write or read access to the GitHub, where uh, people who want to contribute, you know, a, a given um, write ability, whereas everyone else who wants to just come and peruse and not necessarily contribute, and uh, can make do with just the read access. But, uh, you know, I'd let the design team and the design team lead kind of decide for themselves um, uh, how they want to approach it. Thank you. Yeah, it's also possible, uh, a thought that I had was to get contributions from people maybe not even participating in the ITF when you're on GitHub. Uh, be it colleagues or or some random bypasser having suggestions for how to solve something or a suggestion, um, which could very well just be uh, tracked in, in the issue tracker or via pull request. So it, it works for everyone, I think, uh, no matter what level of participation you want to. So the queue is open, um, but it seems maybe we can close the meeting. We have a suggested way forward of uh, sending out a summarizing mail, creating repos for 6241 base, uh, I mean, netconf and restconf base documents on GitHub, sending out a second mail saying that these are on the netconf list as well and also a doodle poll uh, with suggest uh, asking for good scheduling for kickoff meetings and also a handful of volunteers already kent yes i agree i think we've come to the end of this meeting thank you per for um leading the discussion and preparing slides and uh, thank you everyone for uh, participating and especially thank you for those who volunteered uh, to be part of the effort um and with this uh, i conclude the virtual interim thank you all thank you thank you bye-bye thank you Are you still there, Mahesh, or do you leave?